Hi, I'm Rick Foster. Welcome to Rick Uncork 365. I want to thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel, clicking on that bell so you'll be reminded of our, our upcoming footage, as well as reaching out to me on social media. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm tasting a different wine or champagne each day for 365 days throughout the entire year of 2020. Now, today, we're going to taste a Spanish cava. I want to give you, a, and this, this one is unique because of its longevity and its history. I mean, Segorda de Vida dates back to the 11th century. And Segorda de Vida has been acquired by the Freshenay um, brand. Now, the Freshenay is the first of the Spanish cavas that have been... Uh, sold in the U.S. They started selling to the United States in about the 1970s, and it became so successful that it launched basically the career of the brand of Freshenay, and now they've bought some local vineyards. Now, Segorda Vida Estates is not far from Barcelona, towards the Mediterranean coast. So it's on the coast of Spain, so it gets, again, a lot of that nice, uh, you know, ocean breeze, and a little bit of the fog, and it has a dry climate, um, probably more drier than California's climate. Now, this region of Spain has had ancient vineyards, and Spain actually has their own varietal, a, a kind of variation from the Chardonnay grapes or the white grapes. The varietals of Spain that they use to create the cavas here at Segorda de Vida Estates is indigenous white varieties of a grape called Exaro, Macabeo, and Pariada. Now these three grapes are indigenous to this area outside of Barcelona on the Mediterranean coast and those are the grapes that are used in their um, cava. Cava basically means cave and it's or cellar. We would say cellar but it's cave. This is all done in the French Champagne tradition and for eight dollars a bottle, this this bottle sells for like eight dollars. For eight dollars a bottle, what you get is these indigenous white grape varietals. They ferment the champagne or the cava in two stages. The first fermentation stage is of the white grapes being introduced to the yeast, introduced to the first stage of fermentation. Then it's put the juice is put into the bottle sealed in leaves. Now the leaves are a stand, a rack, that allows the bottles to sit at a 45 degree angle. And that's where the second fermentation process starts. So as that bottle is at the 45 degree angle, the sediments go to the neck of the bottle. So in the neck of the bottle will be the sediments as the bottle is laying in the leaves like this. So the sediments go into the neck of, of, of the um, bottle and after, after about, oh, I think they said it was like 12 months, is when they then take the sediment out. They have a way of taking the sediment out without re releasing all of the natural gases or the, you know, of the uh, bubbles. When they take that out, they stick the actual cork that's on this bottle now back in the bottle, put it back in the leaves, and let it sit for another five or six months. And that is secondary fermentation process is when we start to get all of that um, bubble, bubbles and the um, complexity of the, of the grapes really start to ferment and uh, meld with the sugars and the yeast in that um, champagne or in the cava. Now I'm going to give this a try. Now as I said, the um, Spain has really only introduced their champagnes or their cavas to the western market in the 1970s and that was with um, Freshenay. And now Segorda de Vida is owned by Freshenay and their winemaker originated from the Freshenay um, estate. Now the Segorda de Vida estate has a kind of a touristic um, atmosphere now. It's, it is an 11th century um, property. It does have a secondary uh, property they do a lot of their uh, tours at, and that's 13th century. So a lot of tourists go to visit this very old estate, as well as watch them make the wines in the traditional champagne method. And the fact that for $8 a bottle, you're getting a cava that has been fermented in the bottle for 12 to 15 months. That's pretty exceptional. Now, Segorda de Vida has several different um, bottles. This is the lower end one. This is the, the Cava Reserve.
Let me give this a smell. I can smell that nice um, aroma from the uh, from the cork. That's a 100% all natural cork. I can smell the aroma from that cork. I smell the grapes. Now that is a very nice, moderate, mildly sweet cava. It's a brute, it's, it's dry, but I'm still having that fruit forwardness of it. I'm tasting a little bit of citrus. I'm tasting a little bit of a pineapple. Um, not, not a green apple. I wouldn't go as far as it being as, as acidic as bringing out notes of a green apple, more of a pineapple. Peaches, pears, pineapple. Those are the notes that I'm getting from this this wine. It's actually very, very nice. Now, I probably couldn't drink a lot of this because it's a little sweeter for my palate. Even though it's dry, it, it's, it's a medium dry, but it's very fruit forward. And it's a very nice champagne. For $8 a bottle, you can't beat it. Well, I hope that you can go out and get yourself a bottle of the Segura de Vida Reserve. Um, it's the Reserve Brut, and it sells for around $8 a bottle, and give it a try. Well, thanks, and I look forward to seeing our next segment. Cheers!